my sister with the same BRCA mutation is doing great and I'm not. This message came from Rachel from Texas. Hi, Rachel. She's been reading the biology of trauma after listening to this week's podcast episode on the role of nervous system work and trauma in genetic health conditions. And she's got questions. So if you haven't gone back to listen to that podcast episode, it's a great one on genetic conditions and what is the role of trauma and nervous system regulation with genetic conditions. Now, Rachel had discovered that she carried the BRCA gene about five years ago. Her sister, who tested positive at the same time, they both made similar lifestyle changes, diet, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, and yet Rachel has progressed to breast cancer while her sister has not. Welcome to this week's Biology Behind It. I'm your host, Dr. Amy. And with October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and with the Biology of Trauma book being the number one best-selling book this week in psychology, and the number seven best-selling nonfiction book overall in the U.S., this seemed like a really important topic to dive into, even though this was not the genetic condition that we talked about on the main episode, that was a hereditary endocrine disorder. We are going to dive into the BRCA gene, which is known as the genetics of breast cancer. This deserves attention. And thank you for asking the question, Rachel. You're really hitting at the heart of what we talked about in the longer podcast episode, which is why people with genetic conditions have vastly different experiences. And we're going to look at the biology behind that. So here's what we know, and here's what's important to know. Breast cancer, lifetime risk of breast cancer in the general population is 20 to 13, or sorry, 12 to 13% lifetime risk. Okay, but when a person, when a woman has the BRCA1 mutation, her risk is 55 to 72 chances. And that's by age 70 to 80. Well, what about the women with BRCA2 mutation? That mutation has a 45 to 69% chance of developing breast cancer by age 70 to 80. So in this scenario, why the difference? Why the difference between 45 and 69% chance of breast cancer with the BRCA2 gene. Why the difference of 55 to 72% with the BRCA1 mutation? If it's genetic, shouldn't it all be the same? Well, maybe there is more to the story and that's what we want to dive into. Now, as we look at this story and well, these statistics, I want to share with you the story of Dana. Dana, you'll meet in chapter seven of the book. And she came in at my office as a 39 year old physician struggling with chronic pelvic pain and digestive issues that started after childhood sexual abuse from her sports coach. At this point, as an adult, her nervous system was cycling between stress and overwhelm. The stress being the sympathetic activation and pushing, achieving, proving herself. And then the dorsal vagal shutdown that I talk about in chapter one of my book, those five steps that the body experiences as it goes into a trauma response and all of the coping mechanisms that come with that. Analyzing everything to live in her head feeling overall numb when she's in this state, forcing a smile to convince people that she is fine. Well, by chapter 17, she is sitting outside of her therapist's office and she has found a lump in her breast and she is going to be getting her results soon. And this is very uh, stressful for her. Of course, this is stressful for her. And so in chapter 17, we're looking at what can she do to start to repair the nervous system dysregulation and the impact of that on her health? 
What can she do to repair the impact of the nervous system dysregulation on her health? So what is the role of oxidative stress with nervous system dysregulation? And what does that have to do with genetic conditions? The simple answer is that nervous system dysregulation, meaning our responses are overreactive and we go into the stress activation or we go into the shutdown, either one is decreasing our body's ability to clear out oxidative stress. That is done best when we are in the parasympathetic state or what you might refer to as the calm alive state. And in that state, our body is naturally engaging all of its healing strategies including the antioxidant repair that will be important as we look at breast cancer. Breast cancer requires a breakdown of our ability to protect our DNA from oxidative damage. And that's exactly what we see in the people who have the higher risk of breast cancer with the BRCA gene they have an increased vulnerability. They have an increased sensitivity to oxidative stress. I am showing you an article right now that was published back in 2013, and it's got a fancy title, BRCA1 interacts with NRF2 to regulate antioxidant signaling and cell survival. Okay, if you're not in the medical field, what does that mean? <laughs> well, actually, if as you read my book, you'll notice that NRF2 is a major antioxidant mechanism of the immune system that I talk about as part of what we can actually do. So in section three of the book, we're going deep into repair tools and NRF2 is going to be one of those leverage points that we have. So what's happening? What is this article talking about? It's talking about the BRCA gene interacts with this specific mechanism of our immune system to regulate antioxidant or that mechanism to repair oxidative stress with cell survival because our cells die. They get overwhelmed when there's too much oxidative stress, too much oxidative damage. So what they're finding in this article and sharing with us is that BRCA tumors retain a defective antioxidant response. What does that mean for you? It means that it increases sensitivity to oxidative stress so that we all are exposed to oxidative stress. That's not the question. The question is, is what is our susceptibility to the damage from that oxidative stress because we're not able to repair it? So what does this have to do with anything related to why we should and why, Rachel, you might consider doing nervous system regulation work for even a genetic condition. Nervous system regulation for genetic conditions. Now, please do not think that I am suggesting that this is the only thing to do, but what I'm going to make the correlation is, is the nervous system dysregulation drives oxidative damage. Oxidative damage changes our DNA. It makes us more susceptible to our genetics. And that is why two people can have the same genetics, two sisters can have the same BRCA gene, and one gets breast cancer and one doesn't. What was the oxidative damage in each of them? The one that develops breast cancer likely has more oxidative damage at the cellular level. The one who does not develop breast cancer, despite having the genes for it, is because their body is able to repair the oxidative stress as it happens, as they're exposed to it. And so again, this brings me back to so much of what we're talking about with nervous system regulation and the mechanism by how the body stores trauma or the mechanism behind how the body keeps score. We know this mechanism and a central feature of the mechanism, it's not everything, but one key player is oxidative stress. 
and it's overwhelming our DNA, which means it's changing our DNA expression or epigenetics. It's changing our epigenetics and we are developing health conditions, diseases, and sometimes diagnoses. So knowing then that our nervous system state is the important aspect for oxidative damage, what are we doing for our nervous system state? And this is where we look at two people, two sisters, Rachel and her sister, same genetics. And what is their inner state of fear? What is their inner state of emotions? That's how many people recognize their inner state is through their emotions and whether they feel anxious, insecure, worried, panicked, or as you will read in my book on Dana, who found this lump in her breast, she was also not just in that sympathetic activation, but she was noticing that she was going into the heaviness, the depression, the overwhelm. And that was her nervous system and its pattern of dysregulation. Now, either one, both the sympathetic activation and the dorsal vagal shutdown are both survival states. You'll know that in chapter two of the biology of trauma, where I talk about the difference between stress and the trauma response. And both are a response to survival. And they both are going to decrease our ability to clear out oxidative stress. They're both going to create an accumulation of oxidative stress. Because of the stress response, it is going to decrease our clearance of oxidative stress while also increasing the uh, production of it because oxidative stress is created when we make energy. And in a stress response, we are making a lot of energy. That's the whole point of a stress response is to make energy, to be able to use it and be superhuman, be super focused or hypervigilant, be super strong. And we need energy to do that. So oxidative stress is normally made in the production of that energy, but it's also then just sitting there when we don't complete that stress response. And instead we cross the line find that we are powerless to make this bad thing stop. And we notice ourselves going into that state of, well, then I shouldn't even try. And that shuts down. It, it dims down our cellular metabolism, including our ability to clear out oxidative stress. So what does this mean for you? This means that even if you have a genetic condition, and if you do, would love for you to type that into the chat, into the comments. If you know that you have a genetic condition, I know that I have a few snips because I've done my 23 and me. I would not consider myself having a hereditary or genetic condition. Certainly have developed an epigenetic condition before I started doing my own nervous system work. So that's been a big part of my repair over the years, but maybe some of you have a genetic condition. Maybe some of you have the BRCA gene, and this has been something that you've been worried about. Well, what do we want to do? We want to be able to shift our nervous system into a state of feeling safe enough because when we can shift our nervous system into the calm alive state, then our body's able to engage its own natural antioxidant or oxidative repair mechanisms. Now, you will also want to do other things. You will also want to take antioxidants. Vitamin C is one of the best antioxidants. Why? Because it's easy to take, it's inexpensive, and you can just get into the routine of taking vitamin C every day. Many people suggest 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. I happen to take a lot more than that. I think of Dr. Linus Pauling, who was a Nobel Prize winner, and I have been told that he took 90,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. So I say that just to kind of 
skew you into the perspective of what could be a safe amount. Any amount that you're taking in that is in excess, you're going to be peeing it out. So I encourage you to consider antioxidants. And there are other antioxidant foods that you can eat. Broccoli being a great one, blueberries being a great one. So look at antioxidants as being a primary tool that you can use for helping your nervous system do the repair of an accumulation of oxidative stress. Finally, I want to share hope because as we look at a topic like a genetic condition, we can feel hopeless. My genes are what's messed up. There's nothing I can do about my genes. This is what we talked about in the longer episodes. So this was episode 141 of the Biology of Trauma podcast. Go back and listen to that one because it contained elements of this aspect of when we have a condition, we can be experiencing overwhelm. Our body can be going into that trauma response because we feel powerless against our own genetics. We feel trapped in a medical system that seems to suggest that we are facing a life of just managing symptoms or for the main podcast episode in the hereditary endocrine disorder that Lizzie had, a lifetime of surgeries and surveillance. And so we can feel all alone in this experience as we get isolated and we have to turn most of our focus on just getting through and getting by and don't have much energy then to connect with others or feel like we don't belong or feel that we're different. So all of those elements can be part of having a genetic condition. And so the conversation around nervous system regulation becomes even more important because it's so much easier for us to be in that place of overwhelm. So this is where as a physician, I have brought in somatic self practices for my patients because I find that the somatic self practices are what help us shift our nervous system the fastest. Somatic self practices being like the one that I have on my book webpage, the five day reset that I'm sharing with those who've ordered my book. You can find that at biologyoftrauma.com forward slash book. I'm sharing my five day somatic nervous system reset for anyone who's ordered the book. Why? Because I want you to have these practices that will allow you to quickly shift your nervous system state, whether from stress to calm alive or from overwhelm into feeling safer. Just safer is sometimes what we're going for. So with that, thank you for joining me on this episode of the biology behind it. I'm your host, Dr. Amy, and I'm leaving you with the hope that even when you or someone that you work with has a genetic condition, that there is so much that we can do for the nervous system state, as well as then the implications that that has for the oxidative stress and the damage that we can repair and also slow down the accumulation of that which will make a big difference for our symptoms and the rest of our life. Thank you.